Hello, everybody. Andy Jacob here with the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. A great show today. I've been waiting for this show for a number of months. You know, everybody is talking about cybersecurity. And of course, the thing about cybersecurity that's so interesting is that it's transforming into something that has only a very few group of worldwide experts that are leading the way. And of course, they're simplifying cybersecurity in a very meaningful way for so many clients from small to mid-sized companies, all the way up to, of course, Fortune 100 companies, companies on the public exchange. I mean, everybody's talking about cyber right now. So we've been able to invite a real leader in the space. His name, of course, is Mr. David Gottesman. I'm gonna call him Dave during the interview. He's the founder and CEO of Epic Machines. And of course, he has Epic Cyber. Everybody's talking about it. David, I'm so excited to have you on the show. I'm going to call you Dave. So welcome to the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. Great. Thanks, Andy. It's a, really, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, thanks for bringing me on. Yeah, I love it. Of course, we already spoke about it. I'm going to get my hands on one of those T-shirts that you're wearing. I'm going to probably <laughs> wear it around you know, the California area around Arizona, wherever I go throughout the world. I love it. I love the logo, but let's get into it. Thank you, Dave. You know, here we sure. go. Epic Diber. I mean, wow, you're doing such great work. Before we get started, though, let's pull the lens back to 30,000 feet. Tell us about Epic Cyber. Tell us a little bit about the parent company, Epic Machines, and then we're going to get into it. Great. So Epic Cyber is a flagship product for us. It is by far the most exciting thing that we've done at this company in our history. And we've got a lot of wood behind the arrow. We've got a lot of really smart people thinking this through. And we've got a lot of people in the market who are very interested in it. And it's really driven by this idea of transformation. And I'm going to do our best to stay away from these cliche buzzwords and things like that. But transformation really is three things. As customers transform, Number one, they're not working at the office. They're working from anywhere, anytime they feel like it, right? Also, number two, adoption of SaaS applications. They're no longer coming off of a server out of a data center. This is showing up from salesforce.com, from Box, from all these different URLs that they need to go through, get that data. And now what's transferring back and forth is very sensitive customer data, very sensitive company data, and they're have, they have to be a custodian for that. When you're on the wide open internet, how are they accessing that is really important, right? And then lastly, there's the digitization of everything. I mean, every single thing that we're doing, they're like, hmm, how can we make this better? So this massive opportunity but to transform everything companies do into something new, into a better approach, into a mobile app, into anything like that. And all the big brains in these companies are thinking about how do we do that? Well, we secure your transformation. While you're going there, the on-premise stuff, the firewalls that sit on the campuses, people aren't in the campuses anymore. Why have a firewall there, right? Like these are the things that people start scratching their head and going, you know, that's a bit inefficient, right? There's so much brain energy that needs to go into that to try and do it on your own. What we've created is this idea that you simply subscribe. We take care of it. You end up with foundational security for your organization that you don't need to worry about at that base layer. Now, there are use cases and things like that that layer on top of that. And we use what we call the belt and suspenders, right? We we start out with foundational stuff. We start adding use cases and we eventually evolve this thing. So, Yeah, so interesting. And you're right in the middle of it. I mean, when we think about cybersecurity and what you're doing, you know, with your system, with your program, you know, you're really transforming and simplifying it for your clients. What types of customers, Dave, reach out? Like they hear about it, they need some help. Give us sort of a, a little bit of sure. an understanding of who's reaching out, what types of companies, and then what their big pain point is right now with their security uh, transformation. Right. So it, there is a range. Um, so I'll kind of take you through it. Um, our sweet spot is 500 and above. 
We've got customers that are as many as 40,000, 50,000, but it's really 500 to about five to 10,000 is the undeniable sweet spot for what we do. Because number one, the old technology that was, you know, millions of dollars been spent on this legacy environment that may be on prem or, or whatever, it's just an old school way of, and it still works great. And all the logic is awesome, right? They still got to operate that. Meanwhile, this company is transforming and people are working everywhere. What do you do? Well, so for those folks, we go, hey, let's bring in this cloud postured security environment. It's got identity, it's got endpoint, it's got uh, all your data in transit. It's fully covered and protected. Your users at a very foundational level are protected so you can focus on that. And then to do it with us, is about 40% of what it would cost to go and hire and train and upskill and upskill and upskill, right? Like that's the hard part. We do the same thing every single day. We're really good at, we have pattern recognition. We're like, oh, we know this, we know that. We remember these use cases. And one of the biggest things is there's always, and it's a very human engagement. We, Every single time you make a change, you go through this sort of trough, if you will, of like, oh boy, change, God, how's this gonna change my life, right? Our goal is to make that as shallow as possible. Make that as just, it's not scary, it goes like this, you're not even gonna know what's there, in fact, it's gonna work better and here's why. You're not gonna be backhauling, I'm sorry, I don't wanna get too technical, but it's very like, it, it makes it really easy. You subscribe, you're up and running, you go through some transition, and then next thing you know, you're starting to add, you're adding operational excellence, you're integrating with other things and automating. So and of anyway, course, that's kind of how it works. Yeah. yeah, I love it, Dave. And of course, for the people watching the show that want to go deep, that want to really, I'll call it get into the weeds, but really know the nuts and bolts. I mean, reach out to his team, reach out to Dave and his team, because yeah. they can go as deep as you want to go. It's yeah. really fascinating. Now, let's talk about human error, because... We have preemptive measures that you can put into place. There are, you know, zero day cyber attacks out there. Let's talk about human error. How important or how integral is human error in the problem of cybersecurity and, and cyber bullying yeah. and, uh, yeah. and hacking yeah. and the like? Yeah. So it's statistics. Okay. If you have a 3% hit rate on sending a message to someone who's going to click on it and open it up on their machine. You've got a thousand employees. You do the math, you're going to get hacked. It only takes one, right? You cannot allow for that. And, and what, what, why does that happen, right? Well, you know, maybe the machine that's being used hasn't been updated in a while. It's got some vulnerabilities that the hackers know about, but it's not been protected and, you know, these folks in IT, which is, by the way, a very thankless job. Security is a very thankless job. No one thanks you. Hey, I didn't get hacked today, right? So they're trying to keep up. They're rarely getting the funding that they need for the, the workforce that they need. And they're going to make do with, with less than they think they probably need to operate. The second that one of those um, machines ends up being compromised, it can roll up, it's ransomware. And if you look at the numbers in ransomware, billions, okay? And it happens all the time. It happens in government. It happens in, in you know, run, like it's not just technology companies because Silicon Valley, like I feel like everyone's somehow a technology company here, right? But if you look at um, the financial orgs, you look at manufacturing, you look at utilities, all of those folks have these problems, these internet of things, they've got thermostats, they've got um, an Alexa, whatever. Like there's always a way to get into that operating system and do something if you want to. And the key is like, how do we build this protection layer? So from a human standpoint, when they're like, oh, yeah, I, I want that Starbucks card for a hundred bucks and they click on it and they, they launch some application, and if you send it to a company that's got 5,000 people, someone's going to do it, right? So, yeah, yeah, so interesting, Dave. You know, we think about it. We think about what I call the bad actors. So let's talk about that. Where are 
they coming from? Is it mostly outside the United States? Are there certain countries that we can sort of label as the quote unquote bad actors? Or is it just so prolific that it's worldwide and you just don't know where the attacks are coming in from? So we did a um, partnership with uh, the FBI a while ago and um, they had some great slides. They had this slide of this Lockheed Martin jet built by Americans, built by the United States. And then another, and I don't want to name countries because I don't want to make enemies, but <laughs> boy, that plane looked the same. And they came out with it a month later, right? So this information being taken from Lockheed, um, the biggest ones that we're seeing and probably the most powerful are these um, state funded entities. And, you know, you're looking at the typical, right? It's China, it's Russia, um, and, you know, a, a number of the other, what we would refer to as um, hostile uh, nation states. And what they're doing, and this is, it, you can see this, they're going, they're extorting money. And that money, many times, is actually going into military weaponry, including nuclear, right? So this is actually a very, very important thing that we are doing. And one of the things that if I could go a little deeper into like sort of the people that we attract and the people we bring in around the team, a lot of the people that are coming here are coming from this uh, trade school called Acuitus. And we'll, we'll have some reference links on our website. If you go to epiccyber.com, we'll have some links to that. They're ex-military. What better type of person who has made the ultimate sacrifice and now they want to get into this business? They go through this trade school and we're bringing interns through this all the time. It's how we're getting the best and brightest. And their approach to the world is really, really, it, it really suits what we're trying to accomplish here. So, yeah, I love it. I want to get into the team in just a minute. It's a fascinating sure. approach that you have. And of course, Military guys and gals, they see what's happening and the money goes in ransomware. And then, like you said, it goes into the hostile country's military. I mean, that that's just scary, scary stuff. It is scary. Let's yeah. talk about what an integration looks like. Somebody reaches out to you. They hear what you're doing. They're watching yeah. the show. You know, the word, you know, is out about Epic, of course. What's the integration look like? How long does it take to really buckle up a system for a company? So I have to say, just so engineering doesn't punch me when this is over, it depends, <laughs> okay? But our, pro our process is this. So we start with a, a, a readiness assessment. It's a health check, right? We go and say, let's take a look. It takes about two hours. Then we go to the value assessment. We understand what are the tools we're going to use, how we're going to integrate, what, what's this subscription going to end up looking like. Um, we do some inter internal due diligence, takes a couple more days, and then an architecture workshop. We create this artifact. We're like, here you are today, here you are in the future, and this is why we believe you've covered this huge surface for attack is now this big, right? We still need to worry about something, but a lot of this stuff is now gone, right? So we keep moving there. Then we do um, the, we prove the value. We go through the uh, transactional documentation, make sure we've got all that taken care of. Then we do an integration map with hands-on keyboard. Our engineers are actually hands-on keyboard. We're doing configurations and we're making sure that there's so much nuance in, in like the teams of developers, the internet of devices that you can't put um, applications on. Um, we need to make sure all that stuff is, is covered. And then we do the, uh, the the cyber readiness posture dashboard, take a look at that. And then after all this is said and done and we deliver it, we make sure it's audit ready. Wow, I love it from you know readiness assessment all the way through hands-on keyboard and, and, and beyond. It's a great approach you have. I was in a tech company recently, not to be named, and it was very surprising to me how everything is so connected. I mean, they connect everything. They're, you know, their washing machines are connected to the refrigerators that talk to the music system that now talk to, you know, a person at their desk that then talks to 
the restaurant. How hard has cyber become with all this interconnectivity that's happening all over at this point? Okay, you, you bring up a great question that, that um, really is the essential shift in security. And it's the shift in how things should be handled. Because what you're talking about is a network with a washer, a dryer, a thermostat, a refrigerator, a laptop, a cell phone, and everything's on the same network and everybody can talk to each other, right? The new approach and what we like to, how we like to think about things is, and networks are still a part of it, but we want everything to be application specific. If you want to log into the washing machine and make it, make it work, can't believe we're even talking about this right now, but it's like, you want to make that work. That's the only thing you should be able to talk to. There is no reason for you as the authenticated and authorized user on a device that's recognized. If you want to wash your clothes, there's only one thing you should do on that thing, on that device, and that's it, right? So that's being what we call application centric, right? It's about the application. It's not that I can see the other thing. Now, if I want to work on the other thing, then I get into that application. And to be able to segment those application streams is a, a big part of segmenting and protecting. Yeah, interesting. I can see that being the name of your book, The Key to Application-Centric Security. I love that. It kind of rolls <laughs> off the tongue. I like really it. interesting. And of course, you have a great team. Of course, you mentioned that you have a, a pipeline of uh, a lot of top quality, high quality individuals that not only love cybersecurity, love cyber, love technology, but they also you know, have a very interesting background in military. How important, Dave, is it for you to get the right people on the team to drive the bus? It is so important. One of the hardest things, and, and I'm just going to and, and this also, I think, well, I know we're going to talk a little bit about entrepreneurship, but this is so prolific in everything I've done in the 12 years that I've been running this organization and other companies before it. In the beginning, it's really hard to get the super high-end, highly skilled guy who's going to, or gal who's going to go to a Google or a Meta or one of these big dogs in Silicon Valley that's going to give them everything they want. They're going to wash their clothes. They're going to do their laundry. I got nothing, right? The only thing I was like, you know, hope this thing turns into something really awesome someday. And, and by the way, along the way, it's going to be brutal. So what I found is grit, desire to be something special. And lastly, you've got to be a caretaker and a good team player. The people that come in and are too individualistic, that are all about themselves, invariably they can provide some real value for a while but they're not able to stay there for the long term so we you end up cycling through that that can be really hard and i will say it always helps to have a good vision it always helps to have the right thing talking to me you know six years ago pretty boring just not gonna lie okay but finally when you figure out what's the right thing to do what's the right skill set what are the right people it also helps to attract the right people that way and i will say the people that are here now they are caretakers they are protectors they hold things for their families naturally they hold things for their friends and it's very much of a human experience around here that it feels really clean people speak their mind all the time i actually rehearsed some of my answers for you in front of the all hands yesterday it was actually uh, got quite a bit of feedback by the way <laughs> i love it of course you know you talk about the team they've got great grit they have great desire and of course they're team players and they're protectors i love that so much let's give some advice to the younger entrepreneurs yeah. watching the show before we get into entrepreneurship i want to talk about some basic things that people, anybody can do to protect themselves online. Are there some certain guidelines? I know I'm throwing a little sidewinder in here, but just sure. at the top of your head that a regular person that's not highly involved in the tech part of a business that, that really just wants to protect themselves the best they can, are there some certain guidelines or rules or, or some facets of their life that they can protect very simply according to, you know, sort of the, the epic cyber protocol uh, that you've put into place? 
Sure. So I think just at, at a human level, um, on a daily basis, I get text messages asking for whatever, right? Like, log into your Netflix account. Never, ever, ever click on a link and put in username and password. Don't. If you want a username and password, go to the site, go to the app on your phone, make sure you know where you're going. Secondly, um, someone calls you, and this, and the thing is, some banks still do this. Be like, look, I, I don't know who you are. I'm not giving you any information. And yes, it's inconvenient and all that kind of thing, but don't give away your banking information when someone calls you, even if it's your banker. Like, I'm just like, no, like, how about I call you? Right? Like, I'm going to go to the website. I'll go to this. Here's this number. I'm going to call that number. How do I get to you from there? Right? Something along those lines to just make sure because this stuff is getting hit all the time and it goes back to the statistics, right? These hackers have got a million people's phone numbers and they're just blasting out tap messages and they're going to get a sucker a couple, probably every time because of just simple math, right? How many people are going to do it? So anyway, just some yeah. thoughts. Yeah, good yeah. thoughts. And of course, when we think about cybersecurity transformed and simplified, Everybody needs that because the bad actors, the bad guys that are out there, you know, yeah. if they just spent their life and their time thinking about positive ways to impact the world and positive yeah. ways to impact society, they'd be successful on the other end of things. But they yeah. spend all their time thinking about bad ways to hoodwink people. And, yeah. and it's just a terrible thing. So that's why we need people like Epic Cyber and your entire team, Dave, to really Make sure that the the readiness of the companies out in the in America and throughout the world are, are prepared. Let's talk about that a little bit. Your clientele, where are they mostly located and where's your sweet spot? So most of the clients that we have, so we're a 24-7 shop. We've got coverage, follow the sun. But most, just because of our gravity, you know, we're here in the States. These are the people we know, these people that we started working with over time. Um, most of them are uh, here in North America. Um, and then uh, a lot of, we, we have a lot of presence in India. Um, and the, these uh, folks are, they're, they're categorized, they're, they're doing contracting or they're, they're a small office or they're, you know, some other element that is treated slightly differently. There's a lot of things to think about global routing and things like that. But the majority of the gravity and, and our focus at the moment is around American businesses. Um, we want to make sure, I'm a big believer of like, you, you nail it and then you replicate it, right? Really do a good job in one area, one group, one approach, and then you can expand from there, so. Yeah, I love it, Dave. And of course, everybody really needs to think about the fastest and most defensible, really cloud native security posture that they possibly can have. And of course, that's why you come in, your team comes in to make sure that that's the case. Audit ready. I mean, you're you're ready to roll over there at, at Epic, that's for sure. Now, let's get back to the entrepreneurs watching the show because your background, I mean, we didn't even get into your background and experience, but it's very vast. And of course, uh, Epic is your is your... Uh, passion right now, but based on your extensive background and experience as an entrepreneur and a business owner, let's get back to the younger entrepreneurs that are maybe facing a tough time. Yeah, maybe, maybe they're having a challenge. Maybe they freeze in the frame. Maybe they don't know where to turn. You know, it's one of those days that for an entrepreneur. We all have them. What kind yeah. of advice can you share with the younger entrepreneurs watching the show about how to keep on pushing through those tough times? God, I just so much. Um, but I'm just going to say a couple of things that just come to mind, right? The first thing is you cannot control the outcome. Freaking out doesn't help. <laughs> the only thing that helps is having your head right, having your health, having everything about you to be in the best condition it could possibly be in to perform. That is your only job. Get yourself to the point where you can perform at your best level. So that's number one. And I, I think that that thread, if I would have acknowledged this years ago, I mean, I might not be here talking to you. 
<laughs> but I will tell you, that is one of the things. Number two that I want to say to you, young entrepreneurs, congratulations and re- maybe not all of them, but at least the ones like me, congratulations on acknowledging the fact that you are unmanageable. You might even be unemployable. So this is a survival strategy. in life. So for me, it was. And once I started doing this, it, I was just so much happier, right? And this is a thing to remember. It's like when it gets hard, nothing's for free, right? Like you, you have a choice. You can love your boss and work really hard or not. Like when I say love your boss, like you don't have one. Or you can be employed and struggle and, and you know, maybe that's your thing. It's really finding out who you are and what you're comfortable with and, and where you're willing to pay and where you're willing to put in the effort. So hope that helps. Um, the other thing I want to say is like, no matter how bad your day is, do some self-care, especially when it's a tough day. And some days are better than others. Some days are way worse than others. Some months are worse than others, right? It, it always comes and goes. The thing is, though, I always find that invariably, no matter how hard something gets, it gets equally as awesome within a, a cycle. So some things to think about. Yeah, I love it. I love it so much. And I love what you said that entrepreneurs, they just might not be employable. I mean, I love that. I just feel that. I mean, what you're doing, I mean, Dave is great. I mean, Thanks. here we go. Epic Machines, Epic Cyber. I mean, top-notch engineering from, from a great group of people that really care. And of course, you know, they're team players, they're protectors. Not only do they protect their position at the company, but more importantly, they want to protect your clients and their clients, and they have the desire and the grit to do so. And for entrepreneurs watching the show, that's three great things that you can do right there in your team development to make sure they have those three things as well. I mean, you do readiness assessments, you know, value assessments, you do hands-on keyboard. I mean, you do it all. What a great insight into what's happening in cyber right now, Dave. I wanna thank you so much for coming on the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series today. And we, we salute you and we salute everybody on your team. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And if I may say, please go to the Epic Cyber website. Also, my Twitter handle up the Epic Cyber MSP for Twitter. Go there and see some, you know, we're constantly putting out things. The um, White House just sent out a new strategy uh, for cybersecurity on March 2nd. We just posted that on Twitter. And um, if you join, if you uh, want to come to Epic Cyber and reach out to us, we'd love to talk to you. We'd love to know that we uh, got it from this conversation. And um, th thanks again. I really enjoyed chatting with you.